Before I start this video, I just want you to go subscribe to KNK and follow him on Instagram. He's helped greatly with the Mario Kart Origins series by providing all the thumbnails, and he did an excellent job on them. Thank you, KNK. And now, we begin the race. You are now watching The Beach. <laughs> Welcome to the series finale of Mario Kart Origins! This series went over every Mario Kart game, meaning not just the mainline games, but also all four of the arcade games and tour. And in the grand finale of the series, we'll be taking a look at what is perhaps the most unique Mario Kart ever made, Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. 2020 was the year I thought we'd finally get a new Mario Kart game on Switch, but with 2020 being 2020, we did end up getting that new Mario Kart, but it was something completely out of the ordinary. I'm of course talking about Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, this game is unique for many reasons. It makes the Switch the first Nintendo system to have more than one Mario Kart game. Looks like 8 Deluxe sold so well that we got another Mario Kart on Switch. It's also one of the only Mario games and the only Mario Kart to be developed by a North American developer. The developer being VLAN Studios. But the biggest difference that sets Mario Kart Live Home Circuit apart from the other games is the fact that it's an augmented reality game. In case you don't know, augmented reality games use the camera or your device to create an interactive experience. They put things like characters, objects, and enemies into your real-life environment. Some examples of AR games include the 3DS's appropriately titled AR games, and of course, Pokemon Go. The concept of Mario Kart Live Home Circuit is really cool. Playing Mario Kart literally from the comfort of your own home sounds like such a cool idea. But was the execution good? I will be joined by my friend KNK to go over the game, as he has played it quite a bit. Say hello, KNK! Hey guys, my name is KNK, and this is the very first time I'm joining Dimitri on his channel. I do graphic design and did all the thumbnails for the Mario Kart Origin series on Dimitri's channel. I'm very happy to be here today, and let's start. Great to have you on here. So the question is, is Mario Kart Live Home Circuit a worthy entry in the Mario Kart series? Time to find out. There are two Mario Kart Live Home Circuit sets that you can get. There's the Mario set and the Luigi set. I chose the Luigi set because Luigi is obviously the better brother in every way. What you'll get with each set is the cart itself, the numbered gates, arrow signs, and a USB-C charging cable. There's actually no physical game cartridge, which is a concern for the future, considering that the Switch eShop will eventually close, but that's probably over a decade from now. You download the game via the eShop, and it's free of charge, but you will need the cart and gates to play it, so it's not really free. The cart itself is excellently designed, it looks great, it's durable, and that's especially important considering that you will crash it into furniture and walls from time to time. The wheels, however, can get hairs stuck in them, such as pet fur, stuff like that. So if you have a dog or person in your house that sheds a lot, you have to keep that in mind. I haven't had any issues with it despite having two cats, and my dog is a Maltese so he doesn't shed. The cart is rechargeable, and depending on what racing speed you choose, the battery life will depend on that. It can be around 2 hours and above if you race at 100cc or under, but 150cc and above will only get you about an hour and a half of battery life. It takes a while to fully charge too, being around 3-4 to four hours. Fast charging would have been much appreciated. The battery life isn't great, so if you're planning on playing for hours on end, that really isn't plausible here. But overall, the cart looks excellent, it's durable, and it works well. Other than the issues listed with the battery and the potential hairs clogging the wheels, I have no complaints. What I do have complaints with, however, are the gates themselves. These are used to build your track, and let me tell you, I HATE these things. Nintendo cheaped out and used cardboard for the gates. At first, it may not seem like a problem, but the problem is, you'll constantly run into them, and they'll slide around. 
You literally need to weigh them down with something like a textbook or something like that. I used soda cans and bottles to weigh them down, but it didn't work out too well. Not to mention they will wear out quickly, since they are cardboard. This game is made for kids in mind, and I guarantee those gates won't last very long. There is no reason why the gates couldn't have been made out of a more durable plastic, especially considering that this is $100 USD. I've seen some comments saying, What's the problem? Nintendo used cardboard for Labo. With that logic, Nintendo might as well make the console and games out of cardboard too, you shill. You can print out replacement gates, but they won't be as accurate to the experience as using the gates it came with. You have to get the dimensions perfect if you make replacement gates, otherwise obstacles and item boxes will not work. I've been looking for a solution to the cardboard gates, so if you guys are aware of one, please let me know. Once you have your cart charged and are done raging about Nintendo and cardboard for the second time after Labo, we have to set it up. With a game like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, you pop in the cartridge, turn on the Switch, and are ready within a minute. Here, you have to get your Switch, get the cart, set up the gates, and you're probably going to want to find things to weigh them down with. It takes about 3-5 to five minutes to set everything up, but it's super easy to do. If Mario Kart 8 is like getting fast food, then Home Circuit is like dining at a restaurant. Nothing complex, it's straight to the point and easy to understand, but it will take longer. Pairing your cart with the Switch is super easy to do as well. Once you have everything set up, it's time to race! The roster in Mario Kart Live Home Circuit is the smallest in the entire series. Yes, even smaller than Mario Kart Arcade GP VR, which only had Mario, Yoshi, Peach, and Luigi. In this game, the only playable characters are Mario and Luigi, which makes sense considering that there are only Mario and Luigi karts. Now if this were a game like Mario Kart 8, I would be livid, but considering the demographic and what kind of game this is, I don't find it to be too big of an issue. Though I will admit, it is a little bit disappointing not seeing Funky Kong use the Flame Runner around my house. Home Circuit does however make up for the small roster, with a ton of different costumes. You unlock them throughout the game, and they really bring more customization to the game. Most costumes are from Super Mario Odyssey, and I have to say, it is very cool getting Luigi variants of these costumes. Could this mean Luigi is in Super Mario Odyssey 2? I sure hope so. And of course, it wouldn't be a modern Mario Kart without metal characters. Not only do we have metal and gold Mario, but now we have metal and gold Luigi, Nathaniel Bandy's worst nightmare. The silver suit is unlocked by getting first place in every 100cc cup, and the gold suit is unlocked by getting first place in every 150cc cup. Honestly though, I don't have a problem with the silver and gold suit. They're essentially trophy characters, kinda like how gold Mario was unlockable after getting first place in every 200cc cup in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. All the costumes are excellent and are a great solution to having a smaller roster. I'm curious to know what you think, K &K. Well, I guess the first thought of everyone who first saw the trailer for Mario Kart Live Home Circuit was that's all? Only Mario and Luigi? Well, I thought the same. I'd love to see more characters coming in the future, like Wario and Waluigi. They would fit perfect to the already existing costumes we have. You can play up to four characters locally, so we should definitely get two more characters one day. The gameplay in Mario Kart Live Home Circuit is at face value, Mario Kart. Only this time, you're racing against Bowser Jr. and the holographic Koopalings. I wonder if they eat holographic meatloaf. You start off by building the track, place your gates where you want them, and then Lakitu will coat your cart's wheels in icky paint like goop, drive through the gates, and you've made your course. It's as easy as that. The gameplay is at its core, Mario Kart. It's not like the Mario Kart Arcade Grand Prix games where it's still Mario Kart, but different in a lot of ways, such as with the hundreds of items, simplified tracks, and flashy presentation. Because other than the game being an AR, this is exactly what you'd expect from Mario Kart. You aim to get first place while using items, try and avoid getting hit by items, and avoiding obstacles as well. There are quite a few obstacles here as well. We have the Freezies returning from Double Dash. Right here you can see the floor is literally lava. And the weird thing is, sometimes the gates are guarded by a Sphinx, so it looks like we won't be able to race for a while. And why are there realistic humans in this game? Go back to Sonic, will ya? But how does the game actually play? The game uses a camera to capture the view of your house. The camera quality is decent. I'm not expecting 4K, but I feel like it could have been slightly better. It's a bit grainy, but if you have normal lighting, it does the job just fine. But if your environment is dimly lit, you will face problems. Some tracks will play okay, but tracks like the underwater ones are nearly impossible to play with bad lighting. It would have been nice if there were some LED headlights on the cart, but you won't have issues under normal lighting circumstances. Now with RC cars, a lot of them don't control great. Usually stuff on the cheaper end of the spectrum, but I'm happy to say, Mario Kart Live Home Circuit plays extremely well. Everything controls as it should. Movement is very smooth. If you played Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, 
The game pretty much controls identical to that game, but there are a few differences between the two games. There's no anti-gravity, of course, so unless you're the Koopalings, you can't drive up walls. Though if that could happen, that would be quite a technical feat. You also can't drag an item behind you, and have to throw it back to defend yourself a la Double Dash. And speaking of Double Dash, let's talk about the items. The items mostly work as you would expect them to. Red shells home into the cart in front of you, bananas cause your opponent to slip, and can defend you from shells. If you've played any Mario Kart game before, you'll get the idea. Unfortunately though, some of the items simply don't translate well into AR. The bullet bill steers you automatically at high speed, and knocks over opponents and obstacles. In a traditional Mario Kart, it works great. One of the best items in the game, but here, eh, not so much. I found it to be more unhelpful than helpful, as I kept bumping into walls and furniture using it. The Chain Chomp also returns from Double Dash, but functions a bit differently. It steers a card in different directions, and makes driving a bit more unpredictable. I really like the inclusion of it here. Considering the kind of game that Home Circuit is, I would have preferred some new items over trying to translate items like the Bullet Bill into AR. Maybe there could have been an oil barrel item like in the arcade games that creates a puddle of oil that causes drivers to slip or slow down. Heck, maybe even a glitter item that functions as a light version of the blooper. Beyond getting first place comes the unlockables. Coins are used to unlock carts, costumes, and horns. There are quite a few unlockables in the game, giving you a lot to do. Usually I would prefer unlocking content in different ways like Mario Kart Wii did, but for this kind of game, it's perfectly fine. So far the general gameplay is good but there are some issues I've experienced playing it. The game will often face connection issues causing lag. This happens if you create more detailed courses that span across different rooms, and it can get especially bad when you're playing in TV mode. So if you're gonna play this game, please, play it in handheld mode. There's a reason why Nintendo never advertises anyone playing this game on the TV, and this is why. You can prevent a lot of the lag by moving to a central location in your track and playing in handheld mode. If you have thick walls, you will face connection issues a lot more, limiting what you can do with the track. This brings up the question of, how much space will you need to play it? I've played the game at three different houses, and I've noticed the game plays best in a single room, with a lot of space. It is recommended that you have at least 10 by 11.5 feet of open space, or 3 by 3.5 meters if you live anywhere outside the US, Liberia, or Myanmar. I've played the game in smaller rooms, and unfortunately, it's too cramped when you get into higher speeds. You can technically play it in a smaller room, but you're not going to have much fun. But under the right circumstances of having enough space, and minimal to no connection issues, the game is so much fun to play. It's almost like a mini amusement park attraction. I'm curious to know how your experience was, k, &K. Seeing the trailer for Mario Kart Live Home Circuit directly reminded me of my childhood playing with my Mario Kart Carrera tracks, which I had great time with and spent hours on. Dimitri told me not a lot of people know Carrera in the US actually, so you guys should definitely check it out if you have the chance to. This set the mark very high for me and couldn't quite compete with my memories of the Mario Carrera tracks I owned. I had some good time playing Mario Kart Live Home Circuit and I actually really like the concept. I think it fits perfectly in the Mario Kart series, especially for kids. They can be creative just like the Lego Mario series and Super Mario Maker. Like Dimitri already mentioned, you will need some space and also experience playing with a friend. I think you would not get the full experience if you play single player, but that goes probably for any Mario Kart game. I personally had a lot of fun even though I wasn't hooked for a long time. I'm not very patient and charging after a short period of time was taking the fun away. The tracks in Mario Kart Live Home Circuit aren't tracks in the traditional sense. Your home is the basis for a track, and unless you're Santa Claus, you haven't been to everyone's house. You can change up the design of your course at any point between tracks, but you have to do this every time, it would get annoying. What Home Circuit did to work around this was quite brilliant. Each track focuses on a gameplay mechanic or theme. A track like Live Circuit introduces you to the basics of the game. Cheap Cheap Reef takes your house underwater, Tornado Tundra brings a blizzard to your house, and unfortunately though, not the kind from Dairy Queen and Piranha Paradise turns your house into a jungle. There's even a variant of Bowser's Castle and Rainbow Road. While this game unfortunately doesn't have pinballs or malls, they did some cool stuff with the tracks. While I will admit, the theming is very basic, the core mechanics are what makes a lot of these tracks fun, along with seeing your house in different environments. It's pretty cool seeing your house literally transformed into a jungle, or having it go underwater, unless you live in Florida that is, where you can experience that without even needing to get the game. But the problem is, some of the mechanics are cool in concept, but not in execution. Some tracks have wind, which you'll have to go against, but you'll always find yourself bumping into stuff, especially at high speed. And because this is AR, obstacles don't always load quickly. You need to have lightning fast reaction time. Those freezy courses especially are absolutely awful. 
Overall, the tracks might not be the most unique, but it's certainly cool seeing the environments they put in your house. What do you think, K and K? There are some great new ideas for tracks we haven't seen before, which I really want to see in the next Mario Kart game, especially World 1-1. They managed to make you not notice your surroundings at home and made the track very unique, even though the layout of the track is always the same if you don't change it. But sometimes there's going on too much on the screen and you don't really see the tracks. Mario Kart Live Home Circuit's presentation can really depend on your house looks. When my house is clean, it looks quite nice. Okay, jokes aside, the game actually looks pretty good. The animations for Mario and Luigi are excellent as they are very expressive and fun to watch. There is a lot of attention to detail, such as when they hold onto their hat when using a mushroom, shaking when they get near the thwomps, and when they use items. The costumes are also excellently designed and even look a bit realistic. Though if I had one nitpick with the presentation, the character models look ever so slightly off model, but I could just be imagining things. The music however is a disappointment. There are about three new songs and they're actually quite good. They return to the jazz style from Mario Kart 8, and despite me preferring the techno style found in the arcade games and tour, these songs are pretty good, but the rest of the songs used for the tracks are ripped straight from Mario Kart 8. Mario Kart 8 had a great soundtrack for sure, but after almost 7 years, I'm so sick of hearing it. Reusing songs for retro tracks is fine, but reusing them for every track is lazy and makes the game seem cheap. Not cheap as in money-wise since it costs $100, I mean cheap as in quality. So in essence, the graphical presentation is great, but in the music department, it is a disappointment. K and K, you're a graphic designer. I'd like to hear your input on the presentation. The graphics are probably one of the realistic ones we have ever seen in a Mario Kart game. Except for Mario Kart Arcade VR, which not a lot of people have the chance to play, unfortunately. They look pretty good if you play them in the handheld mode, which we highly recommend. I completely agree with Dimitri. The music is very disappointing in this game. When it comes to content, Home Circuit has most modes that we've been accustomed to. We have Grand Prix, Time Trials, and Multiplayer, along with the new Custom Race mode. Grand Prix has you racing through cups in different speed classes, aiming to get first place. If you want 100% the game, you're gonna have to get gold in every cup and every class. But if you're playing it casually, I found 100cc for smaller spaces to be the ideal speed, while 150cc is ideal for larger spaces. 50cc is a bit slow, while 200cc is a bit too fast. If Goldilocks was looking for a racing class, she'd probably choose 100cc or 150cc because they're just right. The Grand Prix is a main mode, and it's really fun. There are three tracks with five laps per cup, which makes sense considering that it lowers the risk of the battery dying when you're in the middle of a cup. Then you have Time Trials. By the final episode, I'm sure you know I don't care about Time Trials unless it's Mario Kart Wii, but here, it's actually pretty useful. The coins you get here actually count towards your total coin count, making it super easy to farm for coins since you can turn obstacles off. Though I'm not sure that was the intention here. You can also explore around your house freely, kind of like a hub world. You can watch your chinchilla eat. As you can see, she loves goji berries. There's the Sphinx again. Mess around with the ugly and even make your own mini games. I like to call this one Stack Up. Stack up some amazing games on top of an unstable surface and ram into it. But one of the things Nintendo advertised heavily was the ability to make your own custom tracks. This goes beyond just building the layout because in custom race mode, you can toggle the theme, music, and racing class, but to toggle the gates, you have to do that in explore mode. It would be much more organized if they were all in one place, and the track creator has been one of the most highly requested features in Mario Kart, but don't expect the level of customization you get from something like Super Mario Maker. It's really basic, but for this kind of game, it kind of makes sense. If you want to create your own Rainbow Road with amps and piranha plants, you could totally do that, but overall, I found the Grand Prix to be my favorite mode. Unfortunately, there's no versus mode here, but I didn't find it to be as big of a deal as the lack of it in Mario Kart 7, mainly because the tracks here are a lot more basic in design, you know, just focusing on the theme. Home Circuit has a good amount of single player content, but what about multiplayer? Unfortunately, I haven't played it, which brings us into one of the biggest problems of Home Circuit. You can't play multiplayer and split screen on a single system. Each player needs to have their own Nintendo Switch and cart. Each cart costs $100, and a Switch costs $200 for the Switch Lite and $300 for the regular you're paying a minimum of $400 to play multiplayer. Yes, the game has connection issues in TV mode, but that's because of the layout of your house. I would much rather have occasional connection issues over not having the option to play on a single system at all. Not every household has more than one Switch, since it's mainly a home console, and this could be a major problem. But let's say you can play multiplayer. From what I've seen, it looks fun. It's essentially like racing RC cars, but brought into Mario Kart. But you know what would have been even cooler? A battle mode. The carts can detect when they hit something, and having a battle mode would be a blast to play in real life. P 
People have had this idea even before Home Circuit. If the concern was carts crashing into each other, I don't think that would be an issue. They crash into stuff all the time, and they're just fine. But overall, Mario Kart Live Home Circuit has a decent amount of content, but I would have liked to see a bit more, but there's enough to do here where the game doesn't get boring. What do you think, KNK? There are quite a lot of unlockables, like carts, horns, and costumes, and of course cups. I like all the different variations, they're all pretty unique. I still think there could be some more costumes for Mario and Luigi. Like, what about Fire and Ice Mario? They're not so hard to add, I guess. And what about Gooigi? We all know Nintendo loves clown characters, so why not add him? He would fit perfectly in the ghost-themed tracks. No idea how Nintendo still hasn't added him in Mario Kart Tour. I mean, we got Halloween Rosalina. And for Mario, they could use Shadow Mario from Super Mario Sunshine. I really love the idea, in general, that you are able to customize your own Mario Kart track. I'm actually really shocked that this feature wasn't included in any Mario Kart game before. The only game I personally remember is where you could customize your own tracks was to an extent Diddy Kong Racing on the DS. They included the so-called Witch Race, where you could build your own tracks. I had so much fun doing that back in the day. So far we've come to the conclusion that Mario Kart Live Home Circuit has a microscopic roster that's compensated by having a lot of great costumes, fun gameplay that has occasional connection issues and problems with the items, interesting and good track ideas despite some of them not working out too well, a great graphical presentation, a poor musical presentation, and a decent amount of content while facing the issue of astronomically expensive multiplayer. So what's the verdict? Mario Kart Live Home Circuit is fun! Most of the time it works well, and the only reason the footage here lags is because I played it in TV mode to record it. The concept of real life Mario Kart is cool, and the execution was pretty good here. But, is this the Mario Kart 9 we've all been waiting for? Do I even need to say it? <laughs> Don't get me wrong, Home Circuit is a fun game, but honestly, it's more of a novelty than anything else. While it does have a decent amount of content, it simply isn't as engaging as a mainline Mario Kart game. Now I know what you might be asking yourself, is the game worth buying? If you're a diehard Mario Kart fan like I am and want a cool little novelty, I would say yes, but I would highly recommend getting on a sale if that ever happens at around 60 to 80 US dollars, because I do find the $100 to be a bit steep, especially with the cardboard gates. However, there are many factors you have to consider before buying Mario Kart Live Home Circuit. Do I have enough space to play the game? Am I okay with the price? And is the layout of my house good for tracks? My friend TND got home circuit for his little brother, and unfortunately, he couldn't play it due to the lack of space. But the most important question you want to ask yourself is, will I personally enjoy the game? Nintendo games are usually for everyone, but this is one of the few exceptions where the main demographic is children. If you're 6 to 12, I would say you'd have an absolute blast playing it. But if you're older, I don't think you'd really enjoy it as much unless you're really, really into Mario Kart. I'll admit, I had fun playing it. It's exactly what I expected, and I was not disappointed. But I also admit it's a bit overpriced for what it offers, and maybe if the gates were plastic, I would make an exception. What did you think of your experience with the game K &K? Mario Kart Live Home Circuit is a great game, in my opinion, with some great new features. Some things could have been done better, like including a game case, and Nintendo, please stop making Nintendo level. Thanks so much for having me today, Dimitri. It was an honor for me taking part in this video. I had some great time. If you guys want to check out my Instagram and YouTube, they are linked in the description below. Great to have you on here, k, &K. And that concludes the Mario Kart Origins series. Don't worry guys, whenever there's a new Mario Kart, I will make an Origins episode on it. But this concludes a bi-weekly series. From pinballs to malls, vanilla lake to a track filled with cake, and even real life locations, this journey has been a grand one. We looked at every mainline game, aka the only games Nintendo acknowledges. We took field trips to the arcade, and we finally reached the end of the Rainbow Road by playing Mario Kart in real life. Thank you to everyone who's made this series possible. Special thanks to Mancalore, TND, 64iOS, Steady94, and KNK for being part of the series. And a big thank you to all of you for tuning in. I had a lot of fun making this series, and I'm glad you all enjoyed it. Now I know what you might be asking yourself, what's next? Mario Kart Origins as a series might be concluded, but there are not just one, but two bonus features coming. Mario Kart Origins Episode 0 will cover the Mario Kart games that never saw the light of day, ones that were either cancelled or just a concept. And considering that every Mario Kart game has been reviewed, I will make an updated every Mario Kart rank list, including Mario Kart Live Home Circuit and Mario Kart Arcade GP VR. But that's not all. Did you hear something? I think you know what that means. Stay tuned for Super Mario 3D Origins coming March 31st, 2021. Get Hyped!
So there you have it. Here's the series finale of Mario Kart Origins. I'm curious to know what you think of Home Circuit. Do you like the game? And if you don't have it, do you want to pick it up or considering not getting the game? Let me know in the comments, and as always guys, keep calm and da-da on. Thank you.